Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dustin Kircher. I got my partner here, Ben Dreiser. We're part of MHP Nation. We got an amazing guest today that uh, we've gotten to meet through one of the communities that we're part of, Sub2, which is an awesome community if you guys are looking into that. Uh, today, we have Jill Jensen. She's the CIO for Sonos Capital, and they specialize in mobile home park investments. And um, when Ben and I had a park uh, a contract and we were talking about raising capital, I reached out to Jill because she is the master, the expert in this field. And so I'm excited to have her on the show and uh, talk about her experience and raising capital for the parks that her group is buying. So Jill, thank you so much for coming on our show. Thank you for having me. I'm the one that feels honored to be here hanging out <laughs> with the cool guys. So. Yeah. Well, Joe, we see you everywhere now. You're all over social media. You're uh, you're making an impact in this space. Um, so my first question is, how are you doing all that? Like the time restraints you just talked about offline that you were flying, you were in California. Now you're back, and then you're you're leaving again. How do you do all that? Someone asked me today, "How do you like what motivates you?" And I said, "Sometimes I am not motivated." but I am dedicated and I'm disciplined mm. and this, the motivation comes and goes. And so it's just staying consistent and it's amazing. The compound effect, yeah, yeah. as long as you're doing something in your business, that's going to produce money, not just working on your business. Social media is great, but are you like messaging people? Are you connecting with them? Are you pitching them or getting on the phone? So that was a big turning point of being like, okay, what actions am I going to take? Even if it's just a little bit every single day. Yep. Absolutely. So what does your day consist of? What's that routine look like? Are you doing a lot of outreach? Uh, you're talking to people every single day. How, what's that look like? We're just going to dive into it. Yep. Here we go. A day <laughs> of life with Jill Jensen. The Jillionaire. That's her uh, That's right. tag name. I am a Jillionaire. <laughs> Yeah. Do you want to know a funny story behind that first? Yeah, yes. I do. Okay, so my Instagram tag, I am a jillionaire. Mm -hmm. Well, I was just seeing if jillionaire was available. Well, it wasn't. So I was like, I am a jillionaire. So don't click the like save button because you can't change it for six weeks. And I was mm -hmm. like, wait, it's like locked me out. And I was like, at least I spelled it right. <laughs> <laughs> so... Anyways, so the day of my life, it starts pretty early. I try to spend personal time by myself in the, in the morning. Like it's amazing. I used to think being productive was like really important. And now I'm realizing it is so important to sit in silence for like a long period of time because Albert Einstein said, inventions are made as soon as you become bored because then you start using your mind. Mm. So in the mornings. I like just sit in my chair and look out my window, just like thinking, you know, yeah. game planning my day, the calm before the storm. Yeah. And I have a VA who helps me with, first of all, just my inboxes, because I have a couple different emails. I have Sonos Capital, but then I also have my own portfolio mm -hmm. in real estate and my own business on the side. Having that was a game changer, just having someone help me stay on track with like, what meetings are coming in, my follow-up on when I do pitch an investor, I have a system afterwards of, hey, I just pitched this person. She's putting the information in monday.com. So my CRM, she's putting the next action steps. And then she's putting on them on my calendar in three days from now when she needs to send the next follow-up or I need to take the next action step of making that phone call or whatnot. So being able to have the system from when I pitch someone or how I'm acquiring that person, um, it's shifting because originally I was strictly just raising capital solely. Mm -hmm. Now I've recruited a team that's raising capital with me nice. and kind of for me. So right now I'm doing a lot more training um, and setting up some of those systems. So that was the long version of what I do. And then right. sneak in there being a single mom. So <laughs> a couple kids alive. Just just sneak that in. It's, it's oh, yeah. 
Oh, don't worry. I live within like three miles of my parents. Oh, that's awesome. So my mom, you better believe I pay her to do my laundry and my dishes. And then <laughs> I employ my mother. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, jam-packed day, obviously, um, like I said, being a single mom and then doing all that. Now you got a team that you're managing. Um, is this team all for Sonos Capital that you guys are raising funds for? Or are you kind of doing other ventures too? Yes. So the team, it's interesting because naturally, you, well, I'm doing business in other regards with them too. Like mm -hmm. we're all building capital, but then I'm like, hey, we're making money. Who's going to go find us a personal deal? So yeah. that we you. can put our money, not just in our fund, but in our own property. So, yep. you know, um, what's interesting is my previous business, I started in door-to-door -door sales. So my only W-2 was in high school. Graduated high school, started knocking doors, did really well, which led me to other people ask how I made money, recruited teams, managers, started my own pest control company with my former husband. So hundreds of sales reps across the nation, thousands of customers, call center, technicians, you name it. So running a team I've already kind of seen how that infrastructure has been built. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, I was bought out of that company and left with sufficient funds. I was like, I got to get my money, making me money. It's real estate. Figured out the private money lending space. And now I have a lot of time on my hands. I wanted to just go solve the same problem for other people that had money sitting around. I was like, I'm good at sales, yep. but this is awesome. Cause I'm just helping people make money. I'm not selling anything yeah. besides the dream. So <laughs> now that I'm with Sonos capital, i came on the CIO and I just said, Hey, can I raise capital? However I want. <laughs> like, sure. I was <laughs> like, okay, well, I'm going to go build an army. <laughs> nice. Very cool. Can you, can you rewind and say how that, private money into real estate, kind of how your real estate journey began and how it evolved and how it transitioned into mobile home parks and kind of guide us through how your path. Yes. Do you like yep. how I made it like two sentences of how I like left a business and started real estate? People like, how did you do that? <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> so snap of the finger. <laughs> and sometimes people are like, oh, I want to get in these different areas of real estate. Well, you need to figure out how to even get a deal or how to even lend your money. And my motto when I started knocking doors was, I just need to find the top sales rep and say everything he says to every response or rebuttal. Where do you live? What do you wear? How do you start a conversation? Like, how many neighborhoods do you knock in a day or a week or whatever? And I'll have similar results. Fast forward. Okay, private money lending. I'm going to be polite, but I'm just going to be blunt. I don't want to lend to a poor person that needs my money because I don't know what I'm doing. Who are the investors leveraging their own money? Because I'll partner with them. If they've been doing this a while, then I want to learn from them. Even if I'm not getting a high return, I'd rather not lose my money and yep. hold the coattail to someone that's getting me something better than in a CD at 5%. Yeah. <laughs> it's the analogy I gave someone the other day was like a doctor. Guess what? They don't just leave school and start cutting people open. Mm -hmm. They go to residency and they watch someone else do it for years. And then someone else watches them do it for a long time. And then they start making money. And I'm like, look, you have to find the right people that know what they're doing before you try to go just do it. And I think that's where some people get stuck where it's like, I'm just taking action and I'm just going to go get my first deal. And I'm like, and then someone was like, but I don't have the credibility to raise capital. Like people won't give me their money. And I'm like, you got to go leverage someone else's credibility if you want to see my money. Yep. Um, Biggest advice I give people is loan to own. Don't yep. lend on a deal 
if you're not willing to own the worst case scenario. Yep. I don't know how to underwrite and how I overcame that was collateral. Mm. Only reason I would lend on a fix and flip is if they have another property that's already cash flowing that if your fix and flip flops, yep. I just inherit your cash flowing property. Yep. It's smart. Yeah. <laughs> and how did that look at the beginning? Can you walk us through a few of those and the evolution? Yes, I can. <laughs> so we're in the same sub two community and I have only ever called one seller in the last year and a half. And you guys know what nightly dial is where everybody calls in and they're practicing. Yep. First nightly dial I've ever watched. I was like, what are we doing? I raised my hand and they're like, we're calling people. And I'm like, okay, I'll call someone. <laughs> and after the call, I was like, there has to be better ways of making money. I'm not doing that again. <laughs> and I yeah. never did. Yeah. So then I was still on the phones every day though, with people inside of the community or inside real estate in investment groups, Facebook groups, LinkedIn, any platform I could find that related to real estate. And then I just asked them, what do you need in your business and what do you have to offer people? And after asking enough questions, it was like, okay, who's lending their money? I'm just trying to find the person who's highly successful at this at a long time. Mm -hmm. And I found someone who is just strictly my negotiator. And that's the only thing he does. Someone else finds the deal. All he does is paperwork, negotiate, and gets me my collateral. And he gets a big piece of the pie, but I've never lost any money. Nice. And then it just came down to finding the people who are really good at what they do when I wanted to start holding collateral mm -hmm. or when I wanted to start holding pro properties, like having equity. And that's when I got in the mobile home park space. Okay. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> cause you are a partner or you've invested personally into mobile parks, right? Correct. So okay. before joining forces and becoming the CIO of Sonos Capital, they're a fund and they acquire mobile home parks. I purchased mobile home parks myself. And when someone approached me, I was like, oh, mobile <laughs> home parks, what? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the most common response. Like, <laughs> what? That's not on Monopoly. It's only hotels and, <laughs> and <Right>? houses. <laughs> then I was like, well, the gentleman hadn't raised rents in 50 years. And I was like, someone's charging people rent at $60. Okay. I don't know a lot, but yeah. what are the comps? And the rent is the lowest comp was $300. So I was like, okay, mm. I'll take a look at this. Yep. Nice. And what was your learning experience from that getting diving into that first one? Do you want to know how I got the first one? Yeah. It's kind of a funny story. <laughs> We're kind of veering off a little here, but well, this is a comedy show, so it's okay. Okay. <laughs> okay good. So my daughter was eight at the time and she's like, mom, do you work? And I was like, yes, I work. She's like, what do you do? I'm like, I was like, I'm an investor. She's like, that's what my dad said. Cause her dad and I are, are divorced and we worked really, they, my children weren't alive for the 10 years. We didn't have a life because we were working so hard. <laughs> and so I was like, my child's going to think money grows on trees because I thought I was doing a service of being available whenever they were awake. So I was like, we're going to Walmart. I gave her 25 bucks. I said, we're doing the lemonade stand. You owe me $30 at the end of the day. There's this thing called interest. It's five dollars <laughs> And so she's like, what if I don't make $30? And I said, you give me a personal guarantee and you go to your bank account or you have another lemonade stand and there's this thing called a late fee and you owe me another $5. <laughs> then I was like, but you own your own business. You make at least $30 and you get to keep it all. So she's like, okay. She makes $46. It's a success. The reason I tell you that story is because I posted it on our social media group page um in the sub two community and i just said you guys could go look it up now i said mm -hmm. um don't forget to invest in your kids teach them what you do 
I invest in more than lemonade stands. So send me your deals. Mm -hmm. And so my friend Deb reached out and I didn't know her at the time. And she's like, Hey, would you be interested in partnering on a mobile home park? And I was like, um, I guess I'm learning how to network with people. I'll get on a phone call with you. And then after looking at the numbers and talking to the guy who is taking down the deal, like our partner, mm -hmm. he, that's the only thing he does in West Virginia. He's like, it's all I do. Here's my track record. Here's my game plan. This is how I do it. Mm. And that's how I acquired the first park. Nice. I, I love that story. The whole lemonade stand thing too. I, I did that actually with my kids and made them learn the cost of goods and all that stuff. And they wanted to buy a video game and it was very shocking. They made almost $80 uh, on their first lemonade stand. Oh and, uh, yeah. It was very the proud power of, of, we had a name. It was the lemonade ladies. Like <laughs> I was like, look, and then I was like, we're going to upsell. You're going to yep. sell some chips. We're going to go get the helium balloons. Cause there's a thing called marketing, yep. but you got to put the signs way down the road, the arrows. So people know when yep. to stop. Yep. And then I was like, give me the poster. And I'm going to show you, you get in the road. You got to be excited about your deal here. Oh yeah. Yeah. We and had like fresh lemons all scattered around the, on the table to make it look, you know, all nice right. and fresh and blooms. Oh, and... So then <laughs> the cop drives by and I throw my hands in the air. Like he seriously didn't even stop. And five minutes later, he came with the ambulance and the fire truck and the, the whole. And I was like, see, when you put yourself out there, kids. Nice. For me. <laughs> Jill teaching lessons <laughs> to eight-year-olds. Doing it for them. <laughs> I was doing it for them. <laughs> so Did you do it a second time after? Oh, yeah. Okay, amazing. Nice. <laughs> yeah, now uh, it's funny is now my kids, uh, they've been we're making them work towards getting a, a Nintendo switch. Right. Got it. And, uh, we're like, okay, well, if you want it, you got to earn it. So they've been the last year been doing things to earn money, you know, selling things that they've had, but now we're doing another lemonade stand because of the success on the first one. <laughs> it's like, Literally. but now we live in a different area. And so I'm like, cause we lived in San Diego and it was like, you know, nice warm weather. Now we're here in the Bay area and it's chilly all the time. Seems like. Wait, so you are in San Diego or you were? I was up until about uh, almost two years ago now. Oh, okay. Yeah. And where are you located now? In the Bay Area by uh, Berkeley. El Cerrito. Yep. <laughs> I was in San Diego on Saturday. That's why I asked. I was like, nice. oh, well, I was just there a couple days yep. ago. I miss it, but, you know, all families here. So, <laughs> so got into that first park. Mm -hmm. Um and then how soon after that did you start connecting with the people at Sonos? My first park I purchased exactly just over a year ago, June of 2023. Okay, nice. And then it was kind of like just throwing spaghetti on the wall, trying to figure out what that next move is, even though I knew it was capital raising. I was like, that's what I'm good at. I know that's what I want to do. And I've got to find that avenue. So it was January of 2024 when I came across the owner of Sonos Capital, Walter Johnson. Mm -hmm. And social media, it just said real estate investor, sent him a message. Let's talk investing. And that's one thing that I tell people. I'm like, just network with everyone and ask them what they do. Just mm -hmm. everywhere you go. What do you do? Let me tell you what I do. And he said he had a fund for mobile home parks. And I was like, oh, cool. Like I have mobile home parks and he already has the deals in the fund. So I vetted him as the person mm -hmm. for diving into it. And then he's very strategic in some of the things when it comes to how he's acquiring these properties um, that I really resonated with. And it was early enough on that I felt like I got my foot in the door at the right time yeah. where I could help like build this to be something that I wanted to be a part of. Cause I was like, really it comes down to creating something, not just yeah. making money off my deals. It's the game of building a machine. So were you like employer number one for uh, the capital raising side? Yes. Nice. Awesome. Well, so now you're, and now you got the team behind you. That's, now I have the team. That's and awesome. the, the biggest thing was when I went to Raise Fest, 
and they said, you can, you can like acquire real estate in all these different areas. You can do Airbnb and you could do mobile home parks. You could be the underwriter and you could do all of them. You just won't get good at one thing. And then they said this, you could raise capital from a lot of people, or you could go find your avatar of that one person. Go learn the language of retirement mm. accounts. Okay. Go learn the language of accountants. Go learn the language because there's so much money. Like, what is your avatar? And I was like, what's my avatar? And that I was like- Such gold right there. Right? I go to these events and I'm like, what's my small hinge that's going to open a big door? Mm -hmm. And that, that was it. Because I realized mine is investor groups. I raise capital from other investors, but there is so much money out there that aren't from investors. Mm -hmm. So my second thought was, I'm going to go find 10 avatars. Let's see how fast I can get out of doing what I do. Yeah. <laughs> how fast can I replace myself? And so then when I started networking, remember how I'm like, I'm on the phone with people and I ask them, you're in real estate. What have you done the last 40 years though? Yeah. Really, I just want to know their network. And because a lot of people don't realize that they could be a capital raiser by simply their occupation. Mm -hmm. And so one woman on my team, Cindy, she helps people with their self-directed IRA accounts okay. outside of real estate. And I was like, well, there's like, I don't even know how many trillions of dollars sitting in retirement accounts. All of <laughs> yeah. us could go learn that one language and be fine forever. Yep. Like, <laughs> so now she has people that get these accounts. And so then Hey, Cindy, I have $200,000. You're in real estate. I already trust you. Where should I, you know, do you have any avenues? Mm -hmm. And this last week I had someone come on my team and she's done medical sales. And she's like, I have built relationships with doctors. And she has one that's like, when are you going to get us involved with your real estate? Like I have a room full of doctors I can fill up. And she's, you know, so yeah. finding another gentleman I talked to is like, I'm a Southwest pilot instructor and I teach this pilot. He's not on my team, but this is just an example of someone. Mm -hmm. He's like, I teach this pilot that makes $300,000 a year. I'm teaching him how to make $600,000 a year. And I was like, see there, that could be someone on your team yeah. that just has the network of money. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, as we've been growing and even throughout our real estate careers, uh, roughly about 20 years for both of us here, um, we've learned that like there's buckets of investors, kind of like what you're talking about, right? Uh, where do you find the struggle when you're talking like grouping certain investors? Because like we find ones that are like, no, nope, they only want to do short term or they only want to be in the state where they live, surprisingly. Um, well, I guess because we live in California, so a lot of California investors like to stay, at least what I've found. Um, but how are you, what kind of questions are you asking to find out if they're the right investor for your guys? Because also too, I mean, I'm not guessing you take every single investor. They also have to kind of fit with the criteria that you guys are Correct. working with, right? So our fund, that's a really good question. So our fund is a 506 C mm -hmm. and that means they have to be accredited. So people that are on listening to the show, if they don't know what accredited means, it means you have a net worth of a million dollars or more, or there's three different ways, or you make $200,000 as an individual yearly or annually. Um, or you make $300,000 with your spouse. Mm -hmm. So there is criteria in order to invest with us individually. And the minimum is $100,000. Okay. Here's the thing. The hurdle is overcoming the story they're telling themselves. Mm. So if they have money, they, or if they're accredited, they're in my pipeline, like not necessarily overcoming what they're looking for is comes more down to 
showing them why mine's a good idea over what they think is a good idea. Got it. So what I really hone in on, because you guys are in the same space, so I'm just going to tell you what I do like strategically with mobile home parks directly. And I hit hard on comparing a, an apartment complex to a single family home to a mobile home park and the advantages of mobile home parks over both of those. And then I explain the advantages of being just an investor over trying to do what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And when it comes down to explaining, like, because I ask, like, what are their ultimate goal? Is it to be passive or is it because you really want to be a landlord to 10 single family homes? Like, why do you, why ask them yeah. why? Yeah. Why do you want that asset or whatever? Because a lot of times they're just not educated. They don't know. Like we didn't mm -hmm. know how awesome mobile home parks are. So explaining the average home price. Well, look, the average home price is $400,000. The average rent for a two bedroom, one bathroom nationwide is $2,000. Where affordable housing is in high demand all of the time. Mm -hmm. You are investing, my investor is putting into something that's in high demand and it's already cash flowing from day one. And if you compare someone that's going to be in an apartment for two and a half years, well, our strategy is to sell the homes themselves. We don't want any tenant owned or we want all tenant owned homes. Mm -hmm. And the average person stays 14 years after they buy the home. So there's low maintenance because we don't take care of the home. No tenants, toilets or termites. Mm -hmm. Low turnover because they stay there potentially 14 years. Less cost, less in insurance because we own the land, not all the homes. So it's painting this picture. There's high tax advantages because they depreciate over 15 years where yep. your portfolio homes are over 27 years. And I like explain, I'm just stating facts yeah. and making their facts look bad. <laughs> <laughs> How nice. can I make my facts just look better? Mm -hmm. And still like we, with our partners, um, the value add that you're increasing on these parks, you can take tax depreciation off of, you know, every deal is going to be different. And we split that with our limited partners. So being able to be like, okay, high demand, like you're pretty secure in this type of deal. And then explaining my team. And really it's just overcoming whatever their story is. And a lot of times it's not necessarily the avenue they're trying to invest. It's something else. Yeah. Nice. Does that mean you're primarily staying away, at least from heavy infill projects and all these deals that you guys are investing in are cash flowing right away? So no. investors will get distributions quickly? Both. We will buy them where they're cash flowing day one. I'll give the example of one we closed on in May. It needs to be like, it needs a facelift. We like the ones that are distressed and tired landlords. So Globe Mobile Home Park, it was 40%, no, 60% occupied, 40% unoccupied. And this is 102 units. Mm. So we come in and we're like, this thing's like almost half full. It's cash flowing $184,000. And that's after expenses. That's only 60% occupied. Wow. And the rents were at $390 a month and the market's five fifty. dollars Wow. Okay. My partner, he, or the owner of Sonos Capital, my partner, he is a dealer for Clayton Homes. So he's getting the homes at wholesale, like mm -hmm. a discount. And our business model is to genuinely provide affordable housing and we sell them at cost. So mm -hmm. we're paying for the home and then to set it, but that's what we're selling it at. Okay. We just want to collect rent as fast as possible, but not have to manage the home. And so we also have a lender in place. If they qualify, we already have a person they can like get the loan through to buy, buy the property. And then some of the homes we demolished, a few of them, they just need some renovating. So really just infilling the 40 units 
slowly raising rents over five years. We pay quarterly distributions, refinance year three, sell in, in between five and six, 10% uh, preferred return for investors every year. We do 50-50 cash flow when the distributions every year, and then about 70% of 70 to 100% of their return is back by year three when we refinance yep. and then we sell and we split it 50 50 in year six okay child just walked in warning <laughs> well you, you did warn us so this this is where the comedy show comes <laughs> i warned you this is called being a single mom that's also an entrepreneur and your child would you like to say hi Okay, run upstairs. <laughs> I did that. She probably going. Hold, please. This is really important. I have a whole bunch of people watching me. Yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> Can I go to their house and ask and ask them something. Yeah. Could go. I go to pick up all of them? Go call Papa and see if he'll thank you. And then you can go with them then. Okay. Okay, run upstairs to your bedroom. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so um, so we split at year six. And we also share the tax appreciation with okay. investors. And then we have like an investor portal. So they can just log on to our website. They sign up through there. That's where they upload their accreditation form, the wiring instructions. It's all ACH transactions. So we just direct deposit them every quarter and their K-1 form is in there. So they're able to just by yes. March 1st, have a K-1 form. They just yep. to their CPA. And then we update them quarterly with pictures and updates on the amenities and on that Globe Mobile home park after we fill those 40 units and we're at 90% occupancy with the raised rents, it'll cash flow after expenses around $322,000. Nice. That's great. With no maintenance. Of course, there's still maintenance, but they're taking yeah. care of their own toilets. Yeah. That's that's awesome. So you're doing a refinance in year three, getting 70 to 100% of that back, and then a sale at year six. So... What is your targeted IRRs that you're usually going for? 30. Oh, wow. The target IRR of 30. That's yep. good. Just slightly over. Yeah. So we are acquiring these parks and we're also targeting mom and pop and off market. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're sending out direct mail to, and some of those are, you have to nurture for a while because they weren't really thinking of selling it, but mm -hmm. they belong to it. Like, the park we closed on first time my partner talked to him was two years ago yeah so it's like just nurturing some of these mom yeah. and pop shops and what's awesome is i was there two three weeks ago when we were like demolishing one of the homes and a woman from globe came and took some pictures and she's like i used to live here and it's so, when I was a little girl and she's like, it's awesome to see you guys updating the amenities and making this look better. So. Nice. nice. And those are some, I mean, great returns and a 10 pref. And then you're doing uh 50, 50 splits on the cash flow after, right? After the 10 pref. And yep. then a 50, and so, 50 yeah. yeah. And we pay the prep before we take distributions. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's that's a great uh, returns for your investors for sure. It's uh, it's it's interesting to see how everybody kind of has a unique spin on the the way that they're structuring with their investors. Um, yeah, but I like that. It's a I see it beneficial both ways too. And we'll be picky when we look at these parks because if those are the type of returns we're offering. Mm -hmm. We're only going to acquire parks that fit within the criteria that we're pitching. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, those are, those are great. Can I rewind just a little bit? You said when you originally met uh, Sonos that you were qualifying him and he kind of checked your boxes. 
can you talk a little bit more about like what you saw in him and his company that made you feel comfortable that made totally. you pursue that relationship further? Okay. How long have you been in real estate? Tell me your track record. What are all your failures that you've learned? Okay. Lessons, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, where are you going? How are you getting there? Who have you learned from? You know, what are your morals as a person? Um, and then it came down to what are your strategies behind it? So he became a dealer for the homes themselves, getting them at a discount, genuinely providing affordable housing. Let me have a get out. I got it. I'll show you. I got you stuff. It's in the secret spot. <laughs> All these people are watching. Hi. Um, there's some in on your bed, next to your bed, and there's a box by the front door. There is? Yeah, but I need to finish this call, please. And then <laughs> um, the other thing was he is a, um, what do you call it for a community? Like he's a board member for affordable okay. housing in the original markets he was looking at. Mm. So in Arizona, he acquired seven different parks at different times and he's the one people are coming to him to get things approved or funding for so he knows where the big box stores are going to be he knows where new jobs are opening so this park that we bought was in this mining community in this small town in, out in Arizona well guess what mining's expanding and they need more housing okay well I've been looking at this mobile home park for years mm -hmm. and it's distressed it has a large value add to it and end of the day my reputation's on the line mm -hmm. and if i'm gonna raise hundreds of millions of dollars if a deal went south everybody looks at me because i was the source yep. on the flip side if it does really well people love to talk about how they're making money and they tell their friends yeah so it had to be something that i'm like i'm already in the space and i understand mobile home parks a little bit because i own some and I saw the value and then I had the story behind it of I've been in your shoes. I understand the process and these are the reasons why we're going where we're going. Yeah. Nice. So with the, your investors that you, they're coming through your funnel or whatnot, uh, obviously it's a relationship business, right? Um, there's constant follow-up. What does that look like on your guys' side? Like how often are you guys touching or touch points, I guess, with your uh, investors in your portal? Because okay. that's where I struggle with. I, I just do not follow up with people, you know? Like, okay. You not... need a VA. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I can connect you with a good one. Just okay. saying, for an agency. <laughs> so that's an offline topic. But um, so the follow-up, I have a, a CRM. Here's the biggest thing. We pitch someone, we need them to wire funds. That's the goal. And so it's like, how do I go from pitching to getting their money? <laughs> and it literally comes down to five words that have like been a game changer. Let me just show you. Because people are like, okay, we get off this call, but then what does it look like? Mm -hmm. So I paint this picture of right when we get off the call until they get all of their money back. They want to know every step of what it's going to look like and like third grade level. If I can just dumb this down for them to understand. And so for me, I have that portal. So I have a pitch deck. I go through the deck and then I say, let me just show you. No matter what the response is, I don't care if they say yes or no. I just, or if they have questions, I just want to paint the picture. Let me just show you. Go to our website, sonoscapital.com. I literally pull it up on my computer. It says, sign up. You put in your information. It's going to send me an email. I have to okay you. Then we get back on the phone together. We go through the paperwork. You upload your accreditation form. If you don't have one, this is how I help you do it. You send it to me. We upload it together. You wire your funds. And then what does it look like? Because then they're like, what if I never see my money again? Yeah. Like I'm overcoming objectives before objections, before they happen. And so I say we send out where we direct deposit quarterly distributions. 
we put in that bank on the portal. Every time we send the quarterly distributions, you'll also see an email with updates of the park. If you're ever in the area and you want to come see it, it would be awesome to like interview or take your picture, you know, because you're going to be an owner yep. and you're going to be a partner in this park or this fund. And so then it's painting and then in year three, so forth. So what's really nice is you're always able to log on to this portal or in your case, it's awesome is you have both Ben and I's contact information, you know, my assistant, my VA that you're going to get here shortly. You always have this connection of who to contact if you have any questions. Okay. March 1st, your K1 form will be in there. We're going to give that to your, you know, your CPA. And then by year six, you know, and then I plant the seed of saying, and then in year six, you receive your funds back. And some people ask me, well, if it's cash flowing, why don't we just hold on to it? Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of people like to see the full cycle of us buying it, updating it and getting your money back. We're always going to have more deals. So you're going to be able to just put your money back in there. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Planting that seed of, you know, and there's, there's times where we probably will just refinance you out and the fund's going to keep the park. Just telling you straight up, I'm probably going to keep it, but I'm also going to get the returns that I showed you that I pitched you. And if you want to join on the next deal, you just do it again. Yeah. Just recycling through the money. So really like once I started painting the picture of exactly what it looks like, and then here's the thing. This is the second biggest thing. No one likes to be sold. Everyone loves to buy. And we all hate FOMO, the fear of missing out. Mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, how do I create this? Where this is what I've said is I'm going to send you this investor deck. I'm going to send you our website. Now, everybody that's going to pitch, they're going to hear my, my psychology behind this. <laughs> I'm <laughs> going to send you this information. You have 24 hours. Send me all of your questions. I just need an answer within 48 hours because I need to go raise the rest of the capital. So take your time, send your questions. Um, if it's a good fit, great. Kind of like, I don't need your money, but I'm going to go find someone else to give these returns to. But because they're always like, let me just think about it. You're like giving them permission. Here, just go think about it. Yeah. Go talk to your wife. Go ask me all your questions. Just, I need an answer within 48 hours because I need to go find another investor. Yeah. So creating urgency without creating awkward. Oh, nice. So how long you've been now with Sonos? Since January. January. And, and how... then I started raising capital in March. Like I met Walter in like January. Okay. And really started raising capital in March. And how much would you say you've raised since then? Uh, personally, one and a half probably in my team, like nice. 3.3 maybe. Just awesome. me and another woman so far. Awesome. And then I just brought on five new people yesterday. So okay. five new investors or five new employees, people to raise capital. Okay. Oh, wow. wow. Dude. I'll have seven by the end of August. Man, you and... got a little, little army going out there. You're going <laughs> to, yeah, but if you just, all you have to do is reverse engineer it. Yeah. Because, like if we raise enough capital, like in the fund, you can take a portion and put it towards marketing. Yep. Okay. So how do we want to market? Well, let's pay for these investor dinners. Okay. If I put out, send out all these mailers and we're pulling lists from people who have occupations that make over $200,000 a year. So that makes them accredited. Yeah. We get them in a room. We lock them in there. <laughs> <laughs> we feed them dinner. That's why I was in San Diego on Saturday. Cause we had it on a yacht. And so our investors came, I did the pitch. And then I was like, if you want the information, give me your email. I wasn't trying to hard close them right there. It's um, not like a timeshare sale. Or... <laughs> <laughs> you spent only all... three more hours, just three more hours. And we'll promise you a steak dinner. <laughs> yeah. So I've been like studying how to do an investor <laughs> dinner. But if you think about it, if everyone hosts one investor dinner, Mm -hmm. And you find four people that have $250,000 in a month, that's a million dollars. Or if yeah. I find a person that has that network, 
it's two people at half a million or 10. My first month I found 10 people at a hundred thousand because I was like, that's a lot of money. And now I'm like, I got to cut this in half. Yep. Yeah. So that, and uh, I have someone helping me like manage my LinkedIn podcasts, like right here. I have a goal of being on someone else's once a week. I don't have my own. I just target everybody else's audience. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's smart. And that's, <laughs> so. that's what I do. I noticed um, Walter, right? Walter. Yeah. Uh, is I've noticed his name out uh, more often too. I'm guessing I was kind of your pushing. Like you got you to gotta get out there more on the social media or more of the podcast scene. Yeah. And then I have, we have hired an agent to get us um, like some like legit podcasts that have 600 episodes or, you know, I mean, we're not legit. Like, no, this is legit because you're most podcasts and you guys are like actually cool. (laughs) I'm just joking. We're we're, we're small (laughs) babies. Yeah, we'll take that. No, no, no. No. (laughs) I'm saying to like get started to get my name out there. You got to find some groups that like, I think that's our next move is like, we need to go find the people that have the following and just like, mm-hmm. how can I sneak in your pictures or how can I sneak on your podcasts? Yep. And then after you land just a couple, all you guys each have to do is go find a couple people that have like legit podcasts. And then they're always like, oh, what do you need? And you just say, I just need you to refer me to two other really good podcasts. And yeah. they do, because guess what? If they have, they've had other people on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's smart. That's yeah. I don't really even thought about that really. <laughs> yeah. Like getting your name out there to others, other viewers that are in the same spaces. And remember, it's just the podcasts that have listeners that are, have money sitting aside. Yep. It doesn't have to be real estate or investing necessarily related, but if you're talking to people that have listeners that are like, Oh, this guy, this accountant is having an investor on. Yeah. CPA strategies, hmm, investing. Yeah, nice. I know you said you just brought on five additional people to help with the fundraising. Is that because there's more deals coming online and just more funds are acquired? Or are you just trying to build such a backup oh. or test of investors that now Not it opens the doors to kind of That's- look at other deals? Awesome question, Ben. It's both. I came on being like, I want to build the same infrastructure of my door-to-door pest control group of like, you know, building wide and building down. And at the mm-hmm. same time, um, I came across someone in the sub two group and he's sent pace apartment complexes. And Bo, the underwriter is like, oh my gosh, I love when you send us your apartments because you're insanely good at underwriting. And it was just from networking and being like, hey, what do you do? What are you good at? And I was like, if Bo likes you as an underwriter and Pace is buying your apartments and then he's posting about it, I want you to come underwrite for us because you understand it. And now you just need to learn a little bit from Walter how he likes things under it for mobile home parks. And so right now we have two different deals we're looking at. One that's a 12 park portfolio and a 17 park portfolio. Right. And we have (laughs) one family office that's like, we want to do a deal by ourselves. And we're like, okay, you can have the 12 park portfolio. And then I'm like, all of us other little minions will go find our (laughs) $200,000 people. (laughs) Wow. So it's kind of like, as I'm building the capital raising, I'm like, okay, Walter, we're going to have to find more people to underwrite. So I'm kind of always looking for both sides. Nice. Very cool. So a question I know I have and uh, others that are looking to potentially want to be professional uh, capital raisers is how, how do you get paid? Like it's obviously you're probably, you're on the GP side of some sort, but great question. Yeah. Because legally you cannot raise capital and just get paid a percentage. Yep. Don't do that. If you're listening, I know people that have gotten major trouble doing that. So my capital raisers and myself, we are on a salary and there's different bonus structures. So you have to be doing different responsibilities within the business and with setting calls and the investor dinners, and you're getting paid outside of 
just raising capital. And on top of it, that's going to amplify also, you know, the more capital you raise, the more calls you're doing, the team is hitting numbers, you're getting paid off of the teams. Like, so there's different avenues within one realm. Mm -hmm. And also I'm an investor in the fund itself. So getting paid that way as well. Yeah. Nice. So, I mean, key point there is make sure you're doing it legally because there's a lot of people that are probably not doing it the correct way. No, you're not. And you have to have just a good attorney that knows mm. what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are approaching about an hour. I know your kids are home and uh, you're probably, they're probably right on the side. Like, so <laughs> I want to let you go. We respect your time, but what is one thing you would like to leave with that anybody that's interested in doing what you do? What is it that you would uh, tell them to start with? Make more friends. <laughs> you need to start networking. And second thing is people get shiny object syndrome of trying to figure out what it is they want to do. It's figuring out what you're really good at. And a lot of times the shiny object syndrome is good to figure out what you don't want to do. So you might think you want to raise capital. Um, you got to go out and just try it really. And find the person that has the deals. Um, so figure out, are you the person that wants to raise the capital or do the deal side and then network enough? Cause I started out not knowing anything within real estate or having people. It's like, how did you get there? I'm like, I just made a lot of friends and asked a lot of questions. Yep. Nice. It's great advice. So Jill, we appreciate you coming on the show. I know you're very busy. You're traveling all over the place. Yeah, you're wine in and dine in <laughs> and uh <laughs> and uh we do appreciate you coming here and sharing uh your knowledge on on the space of raising capital and, and the focus on mobile parks you are um, welcome and the tables will turn when i do start a podcast and you guys are gonna <laughs> be on it so sounds good we're looking forward to that <laughs> well thanks, thanks joe appreciate it